Geordie Journal's time, here with Jordan Crowe. I shouted that, didn't I? Yeah. Here with Jordan Crowe and <laughs> Dominic Skate. Just so you can hear us and making sure, because we had some complaints about the sound, but you won't miss me this time. Right, back to winning ways. Uh, it wasn't pretty, it was one for the purists a little bit there at St James's Park, but three points is all that matters. Um, I'm going to frame this, the start of this video with a little bit of, I think, contextual stuff. I think today for me, the result is all that mattered, but it was, it was much more than just three points. It was more than just <clears throat> getting Premier League, the Premier League campaign back on track. It was, it was a little bit about making sure that everybody could enjoy the return to Champions League football after 20 years rather than it be framed with domestic crisis which more drop points at St James's Park here would have been um, I come to you guys now and maybe look a little bit at the game and what you thought went well and what you thought didn't go well Dom, I'll come to you first Yeah, I think it's fair to say it was a slow start to the game Newcastle didn't really have a lot of quality it was all a bit laboured a bit predictable they played a lot of long balls the intensity i think you said Liam, the intensity that became newcastle's identity last season was just not there certainly in the first yeah. half and brentford caused a couple of problems but not really they lacked a bit of quality as well so not not a very exciting first half. I thought Harvey Barnes on his first start in the first half, he did grow into the game later on, um, was very sort of predictable and um, unconvincing on the ball in terms of didn't look like he could beat a man, but did grow into the game and was more of a threat in the second half. Five changes made by Eddie Howe, um, who confirmed after the game Joe Linton will be out for, for three weeks. Sandro Tonali was on the bench today, who um, hopefully will be back involved against his former club AC Milan. So yeah, five changes made. Um, Elliot Anderson, his first start. Sean Longstaff, his first start of the season. Sven Botman back. Um, I thought all the players coming into the side um, did, made, gave a decent account of themselves. Um, as I say, I think Newcastle, after a really slow start, did grow into the game. And then Callum Wilson um, scored the penalty, which I'm sure we'll get on to whether it was a penalty or not, um, a bit, a bit de divisive. Um, no, there's no no divide. Well, there. well, Liam, no you made all of St James's Park know what you felt <laughs> about the penalty. Which, I mean, press box etiquette, like we do, <laughs> sort of try and sit on our hands. Obviously, you want Newcastle to win, but yeah, Liam screaming, it's got to be a penalty. Um, it's Repeatedly, a penalty. yeah. <laughs> um, after Anthony Gordon goes down um, under the challenge of the goalkeeper, um, I was willing. I was willing, Craig Pawson, to actually make a correct decision. I mean, <laughs> seriously, man, what on earth was he today? I'm not really somebody who like dives in on referees because they've Lions? got. Well, <laughs> maybe I am. They've got one of the toughest jobs in football, but you've got a bloke watching up on the telly, man. Use it properly, <laughs> honestly. The, for me. And people may not agree out there, but he, he set the tone from the off, re, the bar really low. He started giving bizarre decisions, didn't give Newcastle anything really for that first 20 minutes until the crowd really started pressuring him. And then he gave some bizarre decisions that probably weren't Newcastle free kicks. And then to come on to the major decisions of the game, how do you give that, how do you disallow that Callum Wilson goal? There's a bloke watching it, there's a bloke watching it on the TV the referees had a look at it, the linesmen have all been had a chance to have a look at it, the fourth official, and they've come to this decision that it was a foul. It's protectionism of goalkeepers at its worst <clears throat> in this game, and I'm all for that. Look, the slightest thing can be a foul, it's about a, a, a deft touch here and there that can affect the goal. There was none of that, it was honestly weak, poor decision making. And then I'll come at the two penalties, which for me, why if they took a second look? For me, VAR is like, have you made an obvious error? Go and have a look at it. The people in Stockney Park have decided that a ball hitting a bloke's arm and stopping it going into a goal scoring position is an obvious error. Like seriously, the refereeing of this game was a disgrace. It genuinely was. There's your headline for this, Jordan. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm just not having Craig Paulson today. Like, what was he on? I'm I'm just not having it. Um, <laughs> these, these videos aren't the same about the Kennedy <laughs> like. Toys came out the pram at points today, like as Dom's mentioning. And 
I think I need to be a little bit more respectful of my position in the press box rather than <laughs> just going full on fan. I rolled back the years to me time in the Gallagher as a season ticket holder 10 years ago or so um, and started screaming, which was a bit, a bit much. Jordan Wright, so he made those, <laughs> he made those five changes. And I think we were talking about during the game, I think it was fair to say that of the five changes, it looked like a team for that first 20 minutes that had had made a lot of changes yeah. to the team, some enforced, some not enforced. That link, the the sort of flow between midfield and attack, that there was no there was no continuity there, was there? And you could tell that they hadn't really played together. No, I, I agree with that. I thought, I didn't think there was, I don't think they were bad individually. Anderson had a moment where he'd made that really nice turn in the middle of the park where he played Harvey Barnes through. Sean Longstaff got in a few good positions in the box. He made a cross for Callum Wilson, obviously, who, who he headed, over, uh, headed the ball over. So I think there was moments with the midfielders. But yeah, in terms of continuity, it was, it was probably similar to what we've seen in recent games, but without obviously Joe Linton and, and Tenari there. So there was a real lack of understanding between between the three. To be honest, I think the likes of, the likes of Sean Longstaff, I think he does need a few games to, to get into his rhythm. I think he needed 45 minutes a day to, 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 to get into it. I thought he was better second he half, was. although he did give the ball away in a couple of couple of moments, a couple of clumsy moments he had, but I thought overall he, he brought that intensity back to the midfield that they've missed. Elliot Anderson, I thought, drifted in and out of the in and out of the game, but again showed little flashes. I, I, I was given the second in the first half when he when he made that turn, I thought it was a real uh, real good moment from him. Again, I think that's still only probably his third, fourth Premier League start, so it was a good game for him to come in today and, and, and get uh, 90 minutes under, under his belt. Which again is another interesting thing that Eddie Howe did in terms of only making one substitution. I don't know if he's been challenging. He's in our Pep Guardiola, our copy in Pep Guardiola. <laughs> he was uh, a bit funny. But right. yeah. yeah, he was. He obviously, he was, he was asked about that afterwards, um, and actually referred back to the Liverpool game when Newcastle were sort of in control against Liverpool, and obviously made them substitutions. But we done a video on that, and it ultimately came to the conclusion that those substitutions did cost Newcastle the game against Liverpool. But Again, going back to the performance, we've already said it, I think it was just really important that they, that they got a win today. Four defeats in a row, going into the first European, our first Champions League game in 20 years. It would have taken the shine off Tuesday a little yeah. bit. Don't get us wrong, when you wake up on Tuesday morning, there'll be a buzz. But um, yeah, it was really, really important that they won today. And however the way they've done it, they've thankfully done it. And uh, yeah, a lot of excitement heading into Tuesday now. I just don't know if we should go on to the, the, well, the Tuesday no, game. So before that, I want to pick out three key players personally that I thought were really good today. I think man of the match, hands down for me, was Kieran Trippier with his defensive output. Incredible. Look, could his free kicks have been better? Could his distribution be better? Yeah, I'll say they could have been. Defensively though, he was incredible. Like, did not put a foot wrong. Won every header in both boxes. Won his challenges. Even when he was beaten, he came back, recovered, won the ball. And it was just, just an excellent outlet. Um, probably a little bit further back than he would have wanted to play uh, in many respects. But for me, he was man of the match. What I would say as well, further forward, I think it, it's it's one that's been divisive among the fan base, but I thought uh, Bruno Guimaraes was much closer to the player that we kind of expect from him today, particularly in that second half. I thought he, he controlled proceedings um, when Newcastle really needed it. They needed leaders on that pitch because they looked a little bit in that, that last sort of 15 minutes under 10 added, a, a team that hadn't won games recently, and they looked like they were hanging in a little bit at times. And I thought Bruno was one who stood up, really stood up there and, and led from the middle with an inexperienced body alongside him and Eric Anderson and Sean Longstaff, who was who was rusty as hell, let's be honest. But I think Newcastle United are a much better midfield when they have Sean Longstaff in there, just because of the work that he does, the graft, and, and I think the the extra time he needs on the ball, which has always been there at times, will get better when he gets up to speed. Um, and I think he plays in the San Siro and, and I'm, I'm really, I think it's a great moment for people like him um, to get a chance like this at, at this football club. And the other one I want to pick out is obviously the goal scorer, Callum Wilson could have had a hat-trick a day, put in a performance, in my opinion, that Alan Shearer would have been very proud of. It was a proper number nine Newcastle, number nine performance. Big, strong, led the line well, took his penalty excellently. Um, you've got a stat for that, haven't you? He's scored 10 out of 10 penalties for Newcastle, which is uh, 
in the Premier League, it's one of the, one of the best. One of the best Newcastle players, yeah. We'll want to chill what the stat is. He's normally better. 10 out of 10 He's normally better. Never, never missed a penalty. 14 goals in 17 games, I thought chipping Dom's right. normally better with the stats on that one. But I, I gave you a good stat at the end, <laughs> at the end and you told me to shut up. <laughs> Go it was um, obviously Newcastle's second win of the season. It took them until October to win two games last season. Liam just promptly told me, shut up, that is a rubbish stat. <laughs> um, yeah, Liam was having none of it. And I think another person you wanted to shut up, uh, I'm launching another Kennedy oh, rant here, right. was uh, Thomas Frank afterwards. Who what? Wasn't... Honestly, he's a bitter, bitter man. Like a bitter man. I remember the way that he described the defeat down there when... It was, it was the was Alexander it Isak. 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 He, made, he made reference to his price tag continuously, didn't he? Yeah. The 63 million. Yeah. I remember sitting, like, he was right in my eye, like, just shaking my head at him during that press conference. It was an incredible one. And again, the guy finished his press conference today at St. James's Park and started blaming the ball boys. Started blaming the ball boys for not giving the ball back quick enough. Honestly, are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Premier League manager who's come here and, and his team put in a decent performance. You know, have had some, you know, he thinks bad refereeing decisions. He didn't think any of the decisions that went against him um, were correct. He would say that. He called out um, Damien Spellman from PA about being, <laughs> for being biased at the start because even he was even from he's the from area. Hartlepool. <laughs> yeah, Hartlepool fan from Hartlepool called him being biased. Um, just comes across as a very bitter man. I actually really like the way that he sets his team up and the job that he's done at Brentford and the players that they've signed. I think there's a lot to admire about the type of stuff that he does, but come on, Thomas. Really? <laughs> do you need to go that low? Do you need to do all that? Show a bit of respect, show a bit of decorum, and don't blame kids for not throwing the ball back. <laughs> Seriously, man, have a word with yourself. It was strange. It was completely unprovoked. Like, everyone had Nobody asked the questions it. and yeah. he just went, and, and the what ball about boys, the by the way. And what about the rule changes? And what about the ball boys? And there's no need for it. Petty, um. petty man. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. At least I make you laugh. <laughs> yeah. Professors have got one window, window today. Window, isn't it? Um, but AC Milan on Tuesday night. Looking forward to that. Cannot wait. All three of the Jody Journals will be there. Press box, San Siro. And we'll try and give you as much content as possible uh, through a trip, a journey. Jump in the comments and let me know what you guys want. Do you want to see, do you want to see a bit of a bit of a tour diary do you want to see we're going through what, what travel and where we're at and, and or do you want do you want sort of us to get other people involved and do interviews and so what do you what do you want from from the Geordie journals during that period we can continue to give our opinion pieces like this as much as you like but our intention is to do one uh, video a day particularly from probably from Eddie Howe's press conference and the match itself in the San Siro um, give you guys a little bit of our eyes on on the experience over there because um, there's only a limited amount of people can actually get over there to, to to do the game and whether in that very privileged position and we want to give you guys the type of content that you want from from that trip but um yeah again i'll come to you first dom on this one thoughts ahead of that game we've seen <clears throat> an absolute trounce into milan oh yeah see milan do you read much into that not really because you i think teams naturally you want after a bad defeat, you want to play as quickly as possible. You want to get that reaction in. And they'll, okay, they might be feeling a bit sorry for themselves now, but they'll be expecting a reaction. So what I'll say now. on that is, how do you feel if Newcastle United could be 5-1 today? It's not even against a rival, it's just in the, it's just in the division. Oh, no, so. no, no, I, th I think you, you are right where it's more about the fans' attitude or us as journalists going into a game. I think when you're playing at elite level football, it's, you just want to play as quickly as possible. You want it um, to be put to bed. And one thing Newcastle have done, certainly last season, not so much this season, is when they have suffered setbacks, when they got beat 3-0 by Aston Villa, the very next game, win 6-1 at first. So it's all about reactions in football and, and bouncing back. So I don't read anything into um, AC Milan getting heavily beat by the rivals. But um, I'm sure Eddie Howe will watch that game and, and learn um, a couple of weaknesses that he will potentially look to exploit on Tuesday night. Jordan. So what like it's it's a real positive one, isn't it? Now obviously we've talked about the result here, give them that little boost heading into it. What kind of team are you expecting Eddie Howe to, to put out? And how much do you think his selection today was influenced by that game on Tuesday night? Uh, yeah, I, th I think the I think the AC Milan game played a point, uh, pl played a role in his team selection today. 
but I also think that an international break did as well. I think you only work with top players during the international break. So I think previously under Eddie Howe, during the international breaks, he's always tend to pick the team out of the players that have been around him during that break. So I think that was part of it as well. And also the run of sort of three straight defeats. I think the team did need a little bit of a freshen up. I think we spoke beforehand about, you know, Sandro Tonali was it a little blessing in disguise that he was injured because it allowed Sean Longstaff to come back into the team. I would argue that probably was the case, but then I think there was moments today where Newcastle needed Sandro Tonali to come on the pitch and, and help control yeah. the midfield. I, I suspect he will probably go back into the, the start 11, do you think? Um, I think so. I think Tonali starts, I'm sure. Yeah, it does. I think it starts in Anderson probably, if I was to guess the team, I think Anderson comes out. I yeah. think your front three, looking at the changes he made today, probably picks itself with Isak and Almiron, who he dropped out of the team. I think it was quite telling he yeah. would bring them in on Tuesday night, despite what I said about Wilson's performance. The fact he didn't bring Isak on is, again, to me, kind of underlines that. Um, I don't think he would have brought Almiron if he didn't feel he had to, but they needed that little bit of energy in the final third, which Almiron gave them. And I think Gordon probably switches out the left as long as that knee knock, which didn't seem to trouble him for much of the game. Yeah. Um, as long as he's all right with that one, um, I think. I think you know what. It feels like a shot. You know, if you look at the game for me on Tuesday, and if you've got real ambitions as a team to finish in the top two of the group, you have to come away from from Milan with something. Mm. Um, but given it's given the the framing of everything around it. You know, minor struggles, some injury problems. Um, the first Champions League game for 20 years at this level. I, I wouldn't, you know, if Newcastle get beat, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think it's the games here under the lights at St James's Park where Newcastle's fate will be decided. I think they can give anybody a game here. If they play like they did for the first 20 minutes at St James's Park <laughs> today, then I think. There'll be a lot of teams looking at it saying we're well, really fancy playing them and again similarly as we said at Brighton um, if they play like that but if you know if they can put together a solid clean sheet style performance like they did today where they were open for 20 minutes but you've got to say largely for the, re the next 80 minutes with a 10 added on they didn't really give much away there wasn't uh, it was feeding off scraps and long distance stuff and crosses into the box for Brentford and I think if Newcastle can limit AC Milan to that kind of stuff on Tuesday night, they've got a bloody good chance of getting a result. So, anything else to add? No, no, just a good day all around, yeah. Right, next time you see us, we'll probably be either in a travel lodge in Manchester or or some kind <laughs> of uh, some kind of bizarre Airbnb that Dom's managed to book win. Um, might, might not quite be glamping as we've done on this <laughs> on this one before, but uh. Let us let us guys know what you think. Obviously, I'll get get in the comments, get in the likes, get a share out there, and let me know what you guys want from the content over there in Italy. If we don't get any response, we'll just do our best to provide the type of stuff that you guys want. So yeah, like, share, and make sure you click the bell as well. Subscribe um, for more Jordy Journals and the fascinating content. Cheers, guys, and we'll see you in Milan.